Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another C3 Corvette video. Today what we're going to do is we're going to pull out a seat. Um, maybe both seats, but right now I'm just going to pull the driver's seat. It's a pretty basic operation. There are just four bolts holding the seat in. One is here. These are all half inchers. The other one is right there. And then the other two are behind the seat. So there's nothing wrong with my seat. Well, except that it's old and needs a new cover. Uh, but um, I want to take these out, clean them really, 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 really well inside the house tonight. Oh, that's pretty. Uh, also, there's crap underneath the seats that I want to get out of there. So I'm going to do that. And plus I'm going to go through this mechanism and make sure everything's clean and all that jazz. So here we go. I will uh, grab my tools and get to work. All right, so all you need is a half inch socket for this. So I am going to uh, see if I can't undo that. Oh, that's easy. Right. That's super super easy. In fact, I can probably... I love this extension because it's got a knurled grip on it. Makes it really easy to to do this kind of stuff. Hey, that doesn't look too bad, but strangely it looks kind of greasy. Ooh. Hmm, that's odd. I'm gonna put that here. Not sure why that smells different and looks damp. I don't know if there's water leakage under there or something. If so, then probably a good thing I'm doing this. All right, there's our other one. Let's see if I can get this on it. Oh, that one's not even tight. All right, let's see, this is another, oops, another reason that I wanna remove the seat is so I can clean up the track underneath and make sure that it uh, that one has a little grease on it too or water they don't smell bad though weird okay now I have to have two hands to move the seat forward and then we'll get the back bolts undone so one of the things I love about restoring cars is the things you find in a car. So this lighter <laughs> has been down there for who knows how long. Let's just take a quick look at that. That is a Bic lighter from I don't know when. It says copyright Bic, but there's no date. Let's see if it works. Oh, that's definitely different from... Looks like it got spray painted black at some point. I'll be amazed if this thing works. Holy shit. <laughs> that is amazing. All right, so I'll hang on to that just for shits and giggles. All right, now what I need to do is remove these two main half inch bolts. Now you see a lot of bolts down there. Uh, but you only want to remove the half inch one or two. So let's start over there. We'll get that one out. That's easy. It's like it's barely even in there. Also, see that's another thing. The, what started me on this little side project today is that I noticed that that seat uh, when I was repairing, I was working on the back side of that seat the other day uh, and fixed that. And then I noticed that it wasn't tight. The frame wasn't tight to the body. So I did tighten it up. I noticed that it was really grungy under here and there's, there's some mouse and rat droppings and whatnot. Okay, so this one is a little bit trickier because it's really dirty under there. Looks like there may be some rust even. So this one is definitely much harder to loosen up than the other three. Looks like water got back here at some point. 
I mean, my car did get rained on a week or two ago, which I don't mind it so much, but I don't want it to get uh, wet more than once in a great while, you know. Don't, don't want to be getting things rusty when they don't need to be. We'll trim that up. Another thing I wanted to do was just kind of look under here and see what this looks like. Um, there is original carpet right there, and I think that they put new carpet right on top of this old stuff when they did the front, because this is two layers up here, which is kind of strange. Um, all right, so I should be able to pull the seat out now, so I'm going to have to do that with two hands, and we'll come back in a minute. Okay, so... I must admit, I always loved these. You can screw these on and off. I always liked those a lot. I think I put log nut on that. The seat looks pretty good, but you can see where mice were eating this foam. Uh, you wouldn't assume that until you looked in here. <laughs> so you can see that there's quite a bit of crud up under here. Ugh, ouch. Um, I'm gonna take this cover off. And, well, let's see what kind of pennies we have here. What's the date on this? I can't even tell. It'd be funny if it was a 76. 72, I can't really tell. So that'll go in our little collection. Got a dime over here. Oh no, it's a nickel, I'm sorry. Let's see, I don't see the year on that, so. That's in there. We have a button, somebody lost a button. That's interesting. All right, so like about it, as far as, that's from my template for the overhead console. Uh, I did get my dual lock for that, so I'm gonna work on redesigning parts of the front and rear so that that'll stick on. Uh, but yeah, so this stuff all needs to be vacuumed out. There's probably rat poop, mouse poop down in here. Ugh, that's disgusting. So let's see, what size? Do we need for these? That's bigger than a 3 8 Let's try 5 sixteenths. Yeah, so that's a 5 sixteenths. And we'll just... Pretty well right there. Alright, so there's one. And two is loose, and three, here. All right, so we've got those loose, these big ones. The two larger ones go in the uh, floor, and the two smaller ones go in the side wall there. And now let's just pull this out. Oh, wow. Oh. Wait a minute. I guess it's tucked up under there. There we go. Okay, so that's loose. Now what do we have in here? Look at that. That's interesting. That is somebody's pendant. I wonder if it's gold. It doesn't really look like it. If it is, it's very thin. So that'll be interesting to clean that up and see what that is. Ugh, this is nasty. <laughs> yeah, yuck. Ugh. I don't even want to touch this gnarly grossness. So this little pocket right here is a really bad spot for water to collect. So I'm going to spray this with some black Rust-Oleum. I probably ought to just get some rust converter, but I don't have any on hand. So I'm going to pull this off and clean it up a little bit, clean this all out, 
and see if there's any more cool stuff down in there and then uh, yeah we'll go from there all right so that bolt is a 13 16th and it is bolting up into this nut right here where are you there so that nut is what the seat belt bottom mounts. So, so I get that big old sucker out of there and then we can lift this guy out of there. We have what looks like a Teflon shim maybe? I don't know. Whatever that is. And another dime. Hey, I'm or a dime, I should say. And now I can say I am... Oh, look at that, 1976. <laughs> That's funny. Um, now I can say I am several cents richer. I am 16 cents richer today. Woohoo! Alright, so I do not want to stick my fingers in that. Um, I'm just going to use this to kind of dig around in there. There's a screw or something. Let's see that. Looks like those same oops. Nine screws down. That's just powering us out. So this thing definitely needs a better clean. Uh, let's see, hey, I can just put this junk through that hole. There's another coin. Possibly. No, that's a plastic cover, and I know what this goes to. This goes to this. How about that? <laughs> Alright. Looky here, we got another button. This is like, I feel like I'm gold panning or something, you know? Like there's another button from the 70s probably, or 80s. Let's see. It feels pretty solid down here. On the, you know, it's pretty solid. It's a little snake. You know, it's a great place to ride in here. It's a good interesting how everything sort of flows here, and that is a drain hole. <laughs> hey, is that a shoe? What the fuck is that? That looks dangerous. Oh, that's a piece of fiberglass resin. Alright. Um, with a layer of what now looks like older carpet on top. I don't know if, I don't think that's actually glued down. I think it's just sitting on top of it. I suppose it's probably worn out back there and that's why. Here you can see two, the two layers. So I'm going to, is there anything in there? Nah. I'm going to, and they didn't even cut that right over there. One of these days, I'm going to actually replace the carpet in here, so I will be posting a video on that soon. Or not soon, but at some point. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab my shop vac and just clean this all out really well. Alright, well, this is cleaning up nicely so far. So far. Um, I've really had to work hard on this, and I'll show you what I'm doing here in a second. Um... This stuff, even though it looks like it's just sitting here on the surface, is really kind of hard to get off of there. So, let me show you what I mean. So, that does not look so clean from this perspective, because it looks like there's a lot of discoloration, but it's actually very clean looking. I did a little trimming. I haven't wiped it down with a rag yet. I'm going to wipe down like that plastic there. I should probably pull that out and clean it too, I think. I'm going to do that. I will remove that. As far as this guy goes, you can see the mechanism inside looks pretty good. 
and um, there's a big spring inside this thing, so I really don't want to mess with it. Also, it's uh, probably a good idea to not lubricate the outside at all, simply because if you do that, you're going to invite grunge and dust and dirt to stick to the thing, and you definitely don't want that. So, um, I am just going to leave that as it is, because it does work fine. And I sprayed some black around in there. I'm going to do a little bit more before I walk away, because it's uh, not really enough, I think. But I'm just going to hit that with a little more paint. So this thing doesn't appear to be real gold, because I did a little polishing on it, and you can see how the edge is silver. So that's just... I don't think that's actually gold, but I'm not really sure. I don't suppose it is, but I tried to polish the backside too, and I don't think gold would do that, so pretty sure it's just crap, so kind of cool, but also I have washed these off and soaked them in purple power. Uh, not really very long. Interestingly, uh, it looks like there's some sort of undercoating on this bolt, and then a couple of these other ones seem to have it too. All, let's see, these, except for one of them, was for the panel. These are for the seat, and then these are for the seat belt. So that's what all those are doing. And then this is what I've used before. I, I, I like it a lot because it's pretty darn durable. Um, and it, it seems to last really well. Um, I have also washed and scrubbed this and this beautiful GM latch. I love these. These are one of my favorite latches I've ever had the pleasure of using. They're just pleasant to operate. They're simple. They last forever. You can polish them up real nice. I have not yet done that, so... I'm not going to soak this in water because I don't want to get water up in there. So I'm just going to probably just give her a nice rag scrub with a damp rag and then maybe go over it with some stuff. But then again, I don't know, man. This, yeah, I'll just use a rag. That'll be fine. So Okay, so, so far what I've done with this thing is I've used a damp towel to clean the cloth part off. And then I used steel wool, that's 4-0, and I used it on here, and then on the this piece, gently on this part, because I think this is coated, um, or if not, it is finished differently. It does have sort of what look like scratches in it, though, and that's not from me using that. Um, I think that's just from use. And then looking inside there, it is pretty dirty. And as you can see, there's some brown crud, rusty shit on there. It's kind of making it sticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, probably this toothbrush, although it doesn't look too clean. But I'm going to use this to gently like scrub here with alcohol. I always keep alcohol in a spray bottle pss, 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 because... It is great. One reason why it's great for stuff like this is that it evaporates quickly and it won't rust in there. So I'm going to do that. One of the things that does, uh, apparently the alcohol does a really good job of removing the paint or stain that was inside this logo. <laughs> so there's something to consider. Also, I recommend using some sort of a plastic or wooden push tool to hold this down while you're scrubbing in there. Um, I can't seem to get rid of that rust. Now, if you were really wanting to restore one of these, I I think if I do anything, I'm probably just going to replace this if I can find a reproduction that looks just like it. But I do want to point out that you can lift these two tabs, this one, this one here, and this one here, and if you pry this outward and upward slightly, it should pop off this end of the of the bottom clip part. And if we look underneath here, you'll see that it 
clips or hooks actually up under the edge of the metal uh, base there so in theory I've never done that but in theory you could just pop this top back off because I'm sure that's just a snap fit and then the seat needs some cleaning for sure one of the things I really am looking forward to is is uh, cleaning all that grunge off of these guys um, I also would like to um, pull the bottom off and clean all that out. And ooh, I don't want to go too far with that. I don't know how far that can go, but I don't want to lean that all the way down. See, that strap gets pulled under, and I don't want it to maybe get pulled out or anything. So I think what I'll do is I'll disconnect it down there first. And then from there, I will remove these two bolts. And as you can see, this bolt is just <laughs> uh, pretty much useless. So I'm going to get that all cleaned up. And then if we turn the rascal sideways there, now we can see the underside of it, which most of it is a uh, steel frame, which is really nice. Um, I'm going to see how much of a pain in the who's it what's it it might be to remove these so that i can clean that out and possibly just give them a spray coating but then again these are not painted so probably ought not to do that um they are really gross and i don't want to mess with that with one hand but as you can see it's pretty messy um, trying to look up into there. Actually, this, this part of it looks really good. Um, I get a kick out of these. These are kind of like, uh, bobby pins morphed with, uh, a, uh, it's kind of like a bobby pin morphed with a paper clip. Thank you. <laughs> and then we have a seat tag labeled doodad. I don't know. If there is a car specific, hey, wait a minute, three, six, no, I don't think that's my, I don't think that's my uh, car's VIN number. Wouldn't that be cool if the seats were tagged to match the VIN on the car? That'd be pretty rad. I'm just going to see if I can tuck this guy up under here. There. I'm going to keep it safe for now. Um, so yeah, uh. We'll be starting that probably in a few minutes. All right, uh, this is kind of funny. Um, so here I have the seat, and I'm looking at this thing thinking, holy balls, that's a huge screwdriver. <laughs> uh, well, look at that, hot diggity dog. I just happen to have a ginormous screwdriver that hopefully will work in there. I have owned this damn thing with this ginormous uh, <laughs> Phillips head thing on it, right? Uh, this thing is about a foot long. Can't tell really in the video. I mean, if I set it there, it might look bigger. That thing is humongous, and I've had it for probably 30 years. I think I got it when I was working at a furniture place for a while. I think it was one of, it might have come with one of the kits that we would build. I don't remember, but I thought, man, this is cool. This ginormous screwdriver is going to come in handy someday. <laughs> well, let's see if it works. And I figured I would have to use two hands, and I did, so I got it loose, but look at that. That works great. So I'm going to go ahead and undo both of these hopefully there's not oh yeah good it looks like as you can see it, it screws into a button there but what i'm kind of thinking maybe oh good okay there's some spring in that so that's not gonna to, oh whoops i gotta undo these two bolts i just remembered so i will have to do that hey you know what i can probably just do this right now okay so here's the way i believe this should be done first of all the first thing you should do is loosen up the strap 
base plate. And before you do that, or when you do that, just have the seat held up by something so that it's not pulling on the strap. That way this strap won't go snapping off or, or be putting any um, weight on the plate as you're trying to loosen it up. And then leave it sitting like this so that you can take these guys off and that one i i didn't even need two hands to undo this one um and then all right interesting there was a washer in here on this one i did not see a washer on the other side and this looks like a standard crap washer you'd buy at home depot but it, it's pretty thick though so it could be a spacer i don't know I don't know. And look at this. So this one, whoops, no, don't look at the floor. This one is not looking so happy. I might need to go ahead and try to, I'm going to do it. While I have this apart, I'm going to measure the good one. So I have two here. I'm going to measure that and duplicate it, 3D print one, and I'm going to use it in place of this one. And I will show you guys one of the benefits of 3D printing. It's pretty freaking amazing. All right. It's a very straightforward and simple process that I use to duplicate an item and 3D print it. So here's my item, and thankfully this is a very simple item to reproduce, which is why it makes for a good demonstration. As you can see, it's just a simple cylindrical shape. So there are just two walls, well, three walls. There's an interior wall, and then there are two exterior walls. There's a bottom or outside surface, I guess and then an inner lip surface, and then an end surface there. So the way I would do this would be I would draw a picture of the thing as best as I can. It doesn't help that I have a caliper in my way. This does not need to be accurate. This is just for recording purposes is all. So I'll draw that and then I will turn my caliber on, and the first thing I'm going to do is measure the outside diameter of the big part here. 1943, 20. Let's see. Probably the easiest way, really, to do this is to put these here and just. Well, I can't get it flat. All right, so well, it's about 1950, so I'm just going to go with that. So we'll go 19.5, do, 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 and that is millimeters. And then for this part, we're looking at 14.5. Six nine fourteen point five. Uh, I don't want to make it too large, so it's like between fourteen point five three and fourteen point six three. So I'm gonna what's half of that? Six three five three five nine five eight fourteen five eight is what I'm gonna call it. Uh, 14.58, do, 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 um, and that's these guys, of course. Now the inner hole, let's see what that inner hole dimension is, and we'll go, we're looking at 14 point, wait, 14 point, Four nine to fourteen point five two. Oh wait, forty five. All right, there seems to be. Oh, I might be cutting the edge. 
<laughs> okay, so it seems to be about 11 point... Uh, Five, eleven point four, eleven point five, eleven point four to eleven point five, so eleven point four seven. I don't know, eleven point four three. All right, and then uh, let's see, we need these heights or thicknesses. This one is 1.5-ish, 1 1.44, 1 1.49. We'll go with 1.5 because it's probably worn a little bit. 1.5. And then this one is our last one, and to measure that, uh, let's see, I'll do it this way. It's roughly 3.5, I'm going to say. Might be 3.6 and a little bit worn, maybe? Maybe I should do 4, just to give it a little extra. I think I'm going to do that because it's probably worn slightly. It may be even longer than that. Uh, but I'll leave it at that. So four. We'll say four. All right. We'll just do boop, boop, 4.0 millimeters, millimeters, millimeters. Ha -ha. And I, I always like to add something silly. Oops. Yay. I don't know. Anyways, whatever. I'm just being dumb. Okay, so now I have my measurements, and what I can do next is start building the 3D model. So now it's starting to build up the layers of the part I just designed. And I'm going to try to zoom in on it. This should take seven minutes. So the, the part is not red. The, the filament is actually white. Um, so this uh, part took me about, I don't know, five minutes to design that, and what you saw about that condensed video of something design, but that was probably about ten minutes to be told. Um, I don't know, that's not including measurements, although, let's say you know what a half hour told, but that's, that's, a, that's a little less than eight minutes. Um, so I'm going to talk about that late, I think we'll test it, so we'll do that. Um, I've been doing modeling for 20, 20, so this whole entire part is sort of spiral. And I don't know why it'll just do that for all the parts, but something's, you know, this is what it's about. Um, this plastic that he's building this up with is a, oh, I'm not sure this enough. The plastic is a PLA, so I think that's a plastic plastic, and it's fascinating to look to it. It's only a little bit like nylon. Simple thing, you can cut parts with nylon, it'll be stronger than these parts with PLA. That's just not true. Um, it's, I think, injection molded nylon tends to be stronger for a lot of reasons. Parts, like door handles, things like that. I mean, keychain, uh, things, things depending on your windshield, uh, they're really stuff, you know. So we're at 96%, 97, 99, and we're done. Okay, right, this might pop up. Yep, so see, it just pops right on off of there. See this little bit sticking up? That's not good. I'll have to sand that off. I might need to sand some edges here. Oops. 
as well, but that sucker is ready to test. Okay, you guys, so here we go. Here is the, the bolt or screw that goes through the seat back and into the seat bottom. And then this is the old, perfect. It's exactly the same diameter as the screw even. And then does it fit in here? Let's find out. Oh my God, it's blindingly, blissfully perfect. I'm winded <laughs> running around okay so now I've taken out the two three eighths inch bolts already now you may know this is uh, got a lever on it that we move left and right to undo the track and that basically when you pull it this direction uh, it unlocks this out of a notch in that <laughs> and that keeps it from sliding well how do you get that out you say oh my god it's trapped well that's pretty straightforward you can undo those two screws if you want but this little knob comes off and if I'm not mistaken I have some drawer pulls that are exactly the same size I think that's probably a quarter inch bolt and you know just a ball so once you get that off of there, then you can just carefully, well, hmm. how do you do this, I wonder? That's intriguing. Maybe you do have to take that off. Okay, oh, I know what's wrong. Hang on, I have to use two hands. Well, that was a pita. So I ended up having to turn this over this way. And I could do that in a certain spot there because it looked like it was worn more. Uh, but there, it's out. This thing needs some major cleaning. We're gonna take a look at that right now. So you might be able to tell which one is a little cleaner. Obviously this one. And the track runs nice and smooth. This one on the other hand doesn't move at all. And even with two hands, it is really nasty. Okay. Like I said, I'm not aiming for a full-blown restoration of these seats right now. I'm just getting them back to usability and reliability and ease of use, I guess. Um, I did get these pretty clean, so now they move pretty smoothly. I'm not going to lubricate them, though, because... Uh, There we go. There. Because I don't want grease down in them. I don't want them to get all greasy and nasty. I'll move those back like that. Alright, so in order to get this strap out, you need a quarter inch socket and get these guys out of here. That one's not even all the way down. <laughs> now, who knows if that's the way it came from the factory. I would guess probably. There's a fair amount of rust on this part. That's interesting. So, um, I don't know. Alright, so we should be able to... Where's my screwdriver? Uh, shoot. Oh, well, maybe this will work. So I want to I want to lift this up, but I got stuff in the way there, and it doesn't look like it's gonna move. Huh? Interesting. All right. So theoretically, you should be able to slide that out of there. Actually, you know what, now that I'm looking at this, I got an idea. I know what I'm going to do. So I just put those nuts back in, or bolt screws, whatever they are, back in there. I'm going to take my spray of alcohol. 
but I'm going to squirt a couple of sprays on this and then I'm going to go along this thing and just clean it off. Alcohol, we'll see how much rust that's getting off of there. So that alone is probably going to help, but I'm going to go ahead and try this. So what this is, is one of my favorite lubricators. It's a Lubriplate Aero multi-purpose lithium grease. Um, this stuff is really quite awesome. I have used it, I think I've mentioned using it before on a number of things. So basically what I'm going to do is just do this and I'm just going to make sure this is covered on both sides. Basically, there's a sharp spot there. So I'm going to, oh, actually, I'm going to use this on the sides because I don't want a bunch of the side of it just lingering there. I don't want to go top and bottom surfaces. And now what I'm going to do, oh, wow, <laughs> that slides through there really easy, a lot, a lot easier already. So, I think it's just going to stick around, you can see then where it touches, and most of the time, underneath. So just pull it around there. That's, that's not fun. All right, so, now. All right, that does not look pretty, I know, but it's not really that important to me at the moment. Um, this works really nicely. It moves very well uh, back and forth it latches in place uh i don't know anyway so that's where i am on that i do love the style of those seats they are really cool really sweet classic bucket seat so basic i know there's no bolstering but i don't drive like a banshee or a race car driver or anything like that so i don't need that really i just cruise on the highways and byways and whatever so all right well i had this thought that it sure seemed like the dime was the right or the same diameter as the hole inside this pendant thing i polished the pendant um on both sides but it's really just tin it's just cheap and i polished the dime and i put them together i used my press i have this press right here that i use it's like a two or three ton press or something I don't know it's just pretty small obviously but it works great for doing things like like this or pressing a bushing or so I also had this cool dragonfly fairy kind of pendant and I kind of liked the ball at certain angles it looks blue um, so I thought well that might look cool because it would just kind of cover the back side of it you know, so I'm just going to hang that from the rearview mirror. Uh, just like that, pretty much. Boop. I left this end. This other end just looks like this for now. And that's leather, leather string, by the way, or leather, whatever, twine. I don't know what you would call it. And at the top of it there, I just used some silver wire and wrapped around it. To kind of, you know, because I thought, well, it looks kind of silly, just the back side of this. Although it doesn't look too bad, I guess. But I kind of wanted something else. Uh-oh. I've done it now. Oh, there we go. But I thought that looked kind of cool, like with wings, you know. Looks sort of like cool. So, I'm going to hang that in the car or somewhere. Probably in the car, because I think that looks cool. And, yeah, I thought about, you know, like, hanging the lighter on there, too, and, you know, putting the buttons on and making it whole, like, collage. <laughs> I'm kidding. I would not stick a lighter on my rearview mirror. I don't know even know if I'll hang this on the rearview mirror. So, anyway, thought you might like to know what I did with those. They're kind of cool.